Hello guys, I'm Fizzy and welcome back to my little career mode series in the lead up to F1 2013. We're here at the Spanish Grand Prix for the 5th race of the season. Um, I had a pretty horrible performance last time out in Bahrain where I crashed my car and scored no, no points whatsoever. But I'm back now and in the mood for some redemption. As you saw there, I'm still using the default car setup which means uh, no advantage for me over the AI in that respect. So let's quickly look at what happened in the qualifying there. This is my first qualifying lap and <laughs> as you can see it's, it's gone pretty wrong guys. Um, so let's see where we are as we now cross the line. Only P8 out of 8 in the third qualifying session. At least we managed to get through the qualifying three at least. That's a, that's a plus, something we haven't been able to do all the time. But now, oh my god, I'm getting blocked everywhere on my last flying lap. Uh, Rosberg sitting on the first corner, Alonso sitting on the third corner and as a result I couldn't improve my lap and end up P12, uh, not P12, P8 on the grid with Vettel doing what he does best, taking pole position. My fellow Nordic man Kimi Raikkonen will be starting the race in second place with uh, the championship leader after the first four races, Fernando Alonso starting the race from P3. So those are the guys I will be aiming for in the race because uh, they're the main rivals in the championship at the moment. If I'm gonna have any ambition to challenge at the front anyway. And now the lights are about to go out. We got Weber and Massa ahead and lights out away we go. Got a good start on with Mark Weber. Pulled the, uh, past him already actually and gaining massively on Massa and Rosberg. Gonna go up the inside of both of them. Up to P5 already even before the first corner. Diving up the inside. Raikkonen and Hamilton has gone wide. And we're up to P3, after only turn 1. It's been an incredible start, and now Alonso has run wide. And we managed to get him as well, the championship leader has bottled it at the start. Although he's actually not lost or gained a position, but anyway, we're up to P2, and it's been an incredible start for us here at the Spanish Grand Prix. Ran a little bit wide there though, and now we're under pressure from Alonso, who managed to keep third place from Kimi Raikkonen, who pressurized him at the previous corner. But Sebastian Vettel is ahead and will be looking to do what he's done so many times annoyingly in the real F1 races. Pull away at the start, get out of the DRS range and just uh, breeze home for an easy win. So th th that'll be what I'll be trying to stop from happening now. Uh, so let's see, as we are just over a second behind going uh, down into sector 3 here. Now skipping one lap further forward and the gap to Vettel is pretty much the same, actually a little bit more. So I haven't had a great lap, Vettel seems to be pulled in away slightly, but let's see what we can do, if we can gain some time on him in the third sector of this lap. It's looking pretty tidy so far, the gap to the cars behind is uh, more than a gap I've got to Vettel, so at least that's a good thing, oh my god, bit of overstay there, that's not what I want uh, as we come around this to this uh, massive main straight of the track. And uh, as we go now onto lap 3 and DRS will be enabled the next time I come around to this part of the track. And here we are now, very getting close to it already. And it looks like I, go like I had a good lap actually, because I'm now closer to Vettel than I was on the previous lap. And I suspect that I might just be within the 1 second zone and get DRS. That could prove costly. And look at the gap back to Alonso, that is just increased massively. It's a purple fastest lap for me, and I'm gaining on Vettel with an incredible speed, with DRS open, and just flies past him as we go towards turn one. That was a pretty easy pass with DRS, but it doesn't ma matter because we're now into the lead of the Spanish Grand Prix. It's incredible. And it may not be Fernando Alonso having taken the lead, but the fans are surely cheering for the fact that Vettel is now not going to be running away with it completely. Now skipping four laps into the future to lap eight as nothing really happened <laughs> in that time of just me chilling out in the lead. And uh, but the train of course behind me, very close as you can see, Vettel, Alonso and I believe Kimi Raikkonen as well, maybe one more car in very close proximity, so it's it's pretty much a fizzy train going on at the moment. Um, but that's that could be dangerous now because we're coming to watch the DRS zone with Vettel very close, so let's see. If he go, oh my god, over there again, oh actually, never mind the DRS common, because we're now all going into the pit lane it seems, for, to make one and only pit stop, put on the, is that the prime hard compound tire, tire that's going to be going on, Vettel, Alonso, Raikkonen all in the pits, there's a couple of cars that's gone out, and have gone a lap longer, but they will surely be pitting within the next couple of laps, so let's see, none of them have managed to jump us in the pits, that's good news for us. Uh, still out in a net first place then, as Groshen just flies by, but he obviously wouldn't have stopped either. 
and here we go then on the next lap the three cars that went longer have just gone into the pits which means I'm back in the lead and Felipe Massa is actually not too far behind he's just come at the pits uh, and I believe he's just come out in P3 so he's he's got himself between Vettel and Alonso or Raikkonen at some point and now we skip a couple of laps further for the forward again with Vettel still hounding us massively oh my god he's even got a run with DRS on this back straight oh dear Vettel has managed to get a position and I couldn't get close enough to get get him back in the at the hairpin that could be crucial now so I really need to keep on him to get DRS on the main straight that we're coming up to Felipe Massa did very well actually to uh, stay out a lap longer and get himself up to P3 because I didn't really see him much before that but now up to Rich Mix uh, Field Mix 3 to get a good run of Vettel surely I'm gonna have him now with DRS do the move that I did for the lead earlier on in the race and here we go Vettel goes defensive but to no avail I'm back in the lead of this race as there's a back marker coming up ahead but surely that should be too much of a problem as we now skip to the end of lap 16 and it's now one lap remaining in this race can I take my first win of the season Vettel clearly doesn't want that to happen as here he comes with the DRS I'm gonna go defensive air and Vettel is not close enough going in to the first corner and that is very important to not lose position on the final lap because it's not any great overtaking places throughout the rest of the lap really here we go again I'm gonna have to go slightly defensive as Vettel is very very close behind as a train still going on back there with Massa and uh, Raikkonen and Alonso still I believe they're all still in it so we just have to defend now the final half of this lap Vettel is our nearest rival and I'm not sure the Spanish fans will be too pleased to see him win again at the Spanish Grand Prix here we go this is the DRS back straight and Vettel is not as close as he was previously here I think I'm gonna be good to defend this if I can nail the corner missed the apex slightly but made it stick on the exit so now I'm gonna just gonna have to make it hard for Vettel to get past this third sector is fortunately for me not made for passing it would be a massive success and surprise if I could drag this Force India to win in its fifth race of the season and now we have a video fail for some reason the video didn't want to show up but you can hear my uh, hear the voice in the background I didn't make any mistakes on the run to the line and here we go weaving to cross the line in P1 now we win the Spanish Grand Prix in the Force India Woo! what a race Right, so that means I win the race, just ahead, six tenths ahead of Sebastian Vettel. Felipe Massa with the impressive third place there with Raikkonen and Alonso also very close behind. Uh, my teammate Adrian Sutil just miss missed out on the points, getting 11th place. Um, I can't see Lewis Hamilton anywhere actually, so he uh, probably, yeah, he DNF'd that down there along with Sergio Perez as well. So bad races for those two. Let's see what this does for the championship then. Alonso still leads 37 points ahead of Raikkonen and 38 ahead of me with uh, Vettel and Massa only just behind as well uh, before there's a little bit of a gap down to Mark Webber but lots of cars still in the hunt for this championship although Alonso's got a bit of a lead and thanks to my win Force India jumps from 6th to 4th in the Constructors Championship and the team is ecstatic so now we're gonna jump into one of my favorite tracks on the calendar one that is extremely challenging but also very re rewarding when you get it right the Monaco Grand Prix and as you can see it was a wet qualifying session so I'm gonna leave you with the pictures of my incredible qualifying performance. So yeah that was fun wasn't it? Um, let's not talk too much more about that. <laughs> that means I'm gonna start this this extremely tough race from the back of the grid not making it any easier for myself there. Uh, for some reason Ricard is behind me so he must have had a problem in a qualifying one as well but anyway here we go the Monaco Grand Prix the lights are about to go out from the back of the grid and here we go I have to navigate two other K-trims and I do P Charles Peak right away and now I will probably have a look at the one that got into turn one gone up the inside of several cars there up to P17 then and it's a clean first corner although I could hear some front wings falling off back there and now following John Eric Wern in 14th place up the hill oh I'm gonna have a look around the outside I think that's a very risky and it's not really possible 
tiny push there for Wern to go wide and it's uh, paid off. Let's see if we can have a look at Grosjean as well. I've done it. Oh, Grosjean's done well to hold it around the outside and now... Oh my god! Oh, oh, oh. oh! So almost in the wall there. But somehow I managed to go around the outside of the hairpin to pass Roman Grosjean. And now we come onto this straight to go into the tunnel for the first time in the race. With Pastor Maldonado just ahead of us in the tunnel. Let's see if we're going to have a look down to the chicane. Going up the inside now, can I break just a little bit of a lock up, but I managed to hit the apex somehow, don't know how, but <laughs> up to P12, so tw 10 positions gained in the fir first half of the lap, and it's been an incredible start for us. I know my teammate Adrian Sotil is uh, the car ahead, so let's see if we can close the gap to him and the train ahead. Come to the hairpin now on lap 2, and we close right up to the back of Sotil and Button, and all the other cars just ahead, there's a bit of carbon fiber there on the floor, so someone's lost their front wing. And as we, oh my god, it's very slow, the car is going through here. So tail and button going side by side, and there's someone just breaking in the middle of the straight during the tunnel. Here we go, Mark Weber, Master Head, and they're going so slowly, man, I don't know what to do. Weber's tapped Master, who's tapped Hulkenberg, oh my god, there's a massive collision. Oh my god, it's like the half of the field has been collected in a mass exodus of uh, cars from this race. <laughs> like if pile of fat donkeys driving into each other back there, I don't know, do not know what they were doing. Uh, <laughs> as, oh my god, I've broken a bit of my front wing end plate, but what on earth happened there? That's probably the biggest crash I've seen by the AI ever on this game. <laughs> that was pretty cool. And it means that I'm up to P7 in this race. Oh my god, it's a yellow flag, it's... Ah, Sebastian Vettel, just standing stationary there pretty much. Holding up uh, Perez as well. Uh, Oh my god, what are they are doing in this race? I'm now up to P4, I don't know how, but it somehow happened within two and a half laps. I'm up to P4 from the back of the grid. Just, uh, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> I can't complain, to be honest. And now, lose Hamilton ahead. I don't know if that other car, it's Kimi Räikkönen, is it? Yep. So let's see if we can have a go at Lewis Hamilton as we come towards this tabac corner with a massive bump on it, which is a bit annoying. And we haven't managed to have a go with them there, not really an overtaking place, you gotta say. Uh, coming through the... She came through the swimming pool now. I'm on a fastest lap, it looks like, on for a fastest lap. Following Hamilton and Raikkonen. Uh, there's a quite a massive gap to a, um, a Fernando Alonso in the lead, if you look at the map. He's already on his way up to the casino square. So it's gonna be, and he's at the fastest lap as well, so it's gonna be very difficult if we're gonna have a chance at uh, getting to Alonso to by the end of the race. I really need to get past Hamilton and uh, Raikkonen quickly if that's going to happen. And now we're going to have uh, maybe another look at Hamilton. No, had to back out of it. It would have been an absolute collision, I think, if I had gone for a move there. Uh, as we now skip to the end of lap 8, or the start of lap 9, and I've set a pass as lap. So I'm, I'm uh, keeping up with these guys, not really finding a way past though, that's the problem. I need to clear these uh, two as quickly as possible if I'm going to have any chance of challenging Alonso for the win. I'm getting very close to the walls now, as I now get a bit of overs there as well, not what we want around here. Get it a little bit wrong and you're easily in the barriers in this very tight and twisted track. Love to drive it though, it's an incredible feeling when you get these corners right. And, uh, Coming towards the end of lap 9 now, still keeping on the gearbox of Lewis Hamilton and Kimi Raikkonen as they now both go into the pit lane. That could be very interesting indeed, as now I have one lap to try and maybe jump them in the pits. Let's see if we can be able to do it. I'm going to need the great in-lap to make that happen. As uh, Fernando Alonso, the race leader, actually went into the pits as well, which means I'm temporarily in the lead for at least uh, this one lap. Come to the end of it now, my gr glory lap in the lead as we can now go into the pit lane. Let's see. I need my pit crew to be on the ball and uh, send me out as quickly as possible. Let's see. Come on, come on, come on. Force India pit crew. Oh no, I had to change my wing. I forgot about that. My uh, little loss of end plate earlier on means that I have to change my wing. And that's going to cost me some time. I doubt that I'll be able to jump people now. Alonso's already gone through. Let's see. There's Kimi Raikkonen. He's still ahead. But Lewis Hamilton is nowhere to be seen. I cannot see Lewis Hamilton anywhere, so I managed to jump one car at least, so that's a, um, an improvement, I, I guess. You can see Lewis Hamilton is back there, not too far behind, but I managed to get up to P3 now, up to podium position around the historic Monaco circuit. So we now come to, oh my god, there's uh, Williams, a back marker, holding up Kimi Raikkonen massively there. 
He's being showed blue flags, but he doesn't want to listen. Pastor Maldonado. <laughs> he's still holding his station there. Raikun's lost out massively because of that. And oh my! He's just had to back on massively. Somehow, I managed to avoid him and get round to take P2. Team Raikun must not be happy with Maldonado there. And I have no idea how I managed to not ram my front wing up uh, uh, Kimi Raikun's anus. Interesting choice of words there, but anyway, <laughs> I've set the fastest lap on lap 14, which means our gap was only 3.1 seconds, and on the next lap, the gap to Alonso is 2.1, and the gap back to Raikun is 3.4, so I'm pulling away and catching on Alonso quite massively, as you can see, he's already there, just ahead of me. I have a chance now to get the win around Monaco after starting the race from the back of the grid. A bit of a there now as I'm pushing very hard <laughs> for the past few laps to get up to the uh, back of Alonso. This is a back marker ahead. I hope the same won't happen with Alonso as what happened to Kimi. As he is getting held up there. But I want to, uh, I want a proper fight with Alonso here for the win around Monaco. I don't want some kind of easy bug pass. As Bianco, Bianchi has done well to let us through there going into the back. So now it's only Alonso versus me. <laughs> And there's only three laps to go in this race. Coming out to one seven lap seventeen. Let's see if we can have a go with the RS. I'm not gonna be close enough, I think, to have a go into turn one. Coming up the hill now towards the casino square. We've got three laps to go in this race, as I said. And we've got to remember as well that uh, Fernando Alonso is the championship leader. He's got quite a bit of a lead in the championship, so this could be crucial for my championship challenge if I can get past him there. This is not only for the Monaco win, although that is the most important thing at the moment. This is also for crucial points in the championship as we get very close to the gearbox of Alonso going through the hairpin. I'm really just pushing. Let's see. I, I'm probably trying to gonna have to try. And get, oh my God! I can't get my words out. But now I'm gonna have a go <laughs> on Alonso coming towards the chicane, but he's kind of blocking the road everywhere. Trying to break a little bit later on the inside. Alonso's done very well there to hold it around on the outside making it difficult for me to get past and uh, now there's not really there's obviously there's not many overtaking spots on this track so let's see if I can try to be close uh, going up the main uh, the start finish straight with DRS that will be my next uh, opportunity I think obviously I'm on, on the option tires you gotta remember I actually started the race on the prime so I'm on the tire advantage but here we go with DRS open I'm very I'm closer than I was on the previous lap Alonso is kind of in the middle of the track I'm gonna break a bit later Ooh, I'm gonna go round the outside! Round the outside of tier one! To take the lead! And Monaco from the championship leader Fernando Alonso! That was incredible! Although Fernando Alonso kind of bottled it by breaking pretty early going through the corner. But for me to hold it round the outside without hitting the wall and to make that stick, I'm pretty happy about that. Now, there's uh, some back markers that we gotta navi navigate as we move on to the final lap of this Monaco Grand Prix. Is Force India gonna get a win around Monaco? Obviously, for the first time ever, they haven't actually had a win uh, ever until my win last time in uh, Spain. Um, that uh, Thunder Guard hasn't made it any <laughs> easy for me, but I managed to navigate him as well. So now we come towards, we got one sector to go of this race. There's still a couple of back markers ahead. Let's hope that they won't cause me any problems. I just want to hold my uh, position now for a clean finish. Oh my god, Gutierrez, what are you doing, you idiot? He's just broken his wing on the final corner, but I'm coming towards the line. And Monaco, baby, yeah! What a win. I can't quite believe that. Obviously, we got a little bit help by that, that massive collision on lap 2, taking pretty much half the field out. <laughs> but, but regardless, I managed to win the Monaco Grand Prix from the back of the grid. And that's not too bad, if you ask me. So for the rest of the results, obviously Alonso takes on second, Kimi third, Lewis Hamilton fourth, and uh, Vettel, despite pretty much stopping his car, uh, car er earlier in the race, takes on fifth. And wow, I just noticed that Charles Pick in, in the Caterham managed to get P10, so Caterham scored their first points ever in Formula 1, with Max Chilton in 11th as well. So <laughs> Marouche also very close, so that's a very weird stuff going on this race. And as you can see, quite a few cars failed to finish the race. So you're probably getting caught up in that massive donkey collision earlier on. Uh, Adrian Sutil, my teammate, being one of those. So for the championship, my win means that I've gone past Kimi Raikkonen up to second place in the standings. Alonso still has a decent gap of 31 points, but I'm starting to claw that back. 
with the performances like this, Vettel and Massa still in with the shout as well. And in the constructors, we managed to pull away from Mercedes and McLaren in the fight for the fourth, but Ferrari still with a massive gap up at the front. So then, it's been an incredible couple of races, two wins from two possible in this video, so I really hope you guys have enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed driving it, because those were two pretty enjoyable races and you can see how happy I am. So obviously feel free to like the video and stuff if you enjoyed it, and as I give it a long so a well deserved hug, I will see you guys next time, goodbye.